long time ago, there lived a man called me. I was very really young uh, during that time, but then I was blessed to have a father who was very educated for his age, but significantly appreciated herbal medicine. If I would ask you right now what this herb is, you wouldn't know. Probably because what you're seeing is just a bunch of things that come from trees. Besides having a father who appreciated uh, traditional medicine, I grew up with a mother who taught English literature. Combine the two, and you find an individual who's very passionate about storytelling and also has a sense for things natural. My name is Odero. In front of you today, I want to explain to you how I got to where I am. So my passion for storytelling led me to found an organization called Anishi Africa. We are keen on telling the African story, its production, its consumption, and its distribution. Part of our engagement has been to improve learning among early learners, early literacy or foundational literacy education. While doing this foundational literacy education, much with my passion for the environment, I realized that children really find it difficult to relate to matters environment. Getting a child to understand biofuels or getting a child to understand fluorocarbons is a very complicated um, concept. But here we are, storytellers. Here we are with a problem of a very sophisticated concept that we want to get the children to learn. So we asked ourselves, how do we use these stories to get these children to digest, to absorb and understand this very sophisticated concept of climate change? This insight came to me while I was doing my work, which is my age to five job at Safari Bowl. Uh, I was playing around with an AI model while thinking about how children learn. So there's a lot of similarities in how machines learn versus how children learn. One, machines learn by contextualizing. Children also learn by relating things to the environment, right? Machines learn by being given data. Children learn by introduce, being introduced to information or learning concepts which we can also call data. Machine learn by something called reinforcement. You have to teach it again and again and again. Children also learn through repetition. Machines also learn through a concept called trial and error. You give it data you test. You give it data you test. Children also learn through trial and error. We give machines space to think creatively find solutions to very sophisticated problems. Children can be smarter than you think. Give a child a problem and see how they think through with their tiny brains. They think through solutions that might surprise you. After that point, we came up and um, consulted and so, what information do we have? What can we get through this information? What data do we have from the educational centers? And how can we use this data to create informed content? that can be digested or absorbed or understood by the young learners. Our biggest way here was we can use creative fictional stories to influence climate change. We came back and introduced this model to our early literacy or foundational learning concept. We call it the Hadithi Hadithi Foundational Literacy Program at Adisha. We go to children's centers or community homes. We find time with children. We teach them how to read. While teaching them how to read, we tell them stories that provoke their minds to think. So that when they see a tree, they, it's not just a tree, it will get you off. When they see a tree, it's not just a tree, it's the source of rain. When they see a tree, it's not just a tree, it's the place where birds come to shelter. This is part of our engagement. Photos you see here are part of our volunteers doing their groundwork at different centers. Our biggest objective is to teach the children how to read since we are keen on storytelling, reading and writing of African stories. But we are using this as a tool to find an audience where we can have conversations with the children, we can have conversations with parents, we can have conversations with caregivers of children so that they are well informed, they know what is going on in the environmental space without using the big words, the sophisticated concepts, and the children are able to be fully aware of what is going on in the environment. So what is next for us? We are inviting um, educational stakeholders in this room. We are inviting caregivers of children in this room. We are inviting schools, governments, and people who are involved in creative content generation. We are trying to match climate change, education, and content creation. So that the next time you're doing a TikTok, 
Think about the environment. Do it in a way that a child can understand. Mention a word or a phrase or a story. Something that you know can work for the children. The advantage you have about storytelling is that you can contextualize it. You can put it in a way that it relates to the culture around you. It relates to the environment around you. You can put it in a way that it speaks to the people who you're targeting. Advantage you have with stories is that you can break it down depending on the age that you're targeting. If you're looking at grade one learners, the nature of the stories you're giving them is pretty different from a grade six learner. So you have the flexibility to play around with themes. You have the flexibility to play around with context. You have the flexibility to utilize um, storytelling as a tool to teach multidisciplinary concepts that will allow the child to become a climate change ambassador.